This is D Hunter bringing you another action figure review. Today I'm going to be looking at the Diamond Select Ghostbusters 2 Slime Blower Race Dance Figure. This is from Series 8 of Ghostbusters, the last series of Ghostbusters 2 figures. This will get us the third of five ways to waves to complete the Firehouse Diorama. Let's check them out. So here's Ray out of the package with all of his various accessories. Let's take a closer look. So here he is out of the packaging and up close. This figure has a great likeness to Dan Aykroyd. This is the second Ray figure they've made for Ghostbusters 2 and they've made at least I think three for Ghostbusters 1. So let's start off by going ahead and looking at his accessories. First off, he has an alternate head, which is probably the coolest thing he comes with. It's sort of Vigo demonized uh, when he was possessed by looking at the painting for too long. Um, I actually tried to pull his head off, and it looks like I'm going to have to use hot water, which is kind of annoying. Uh, when a figure comes with an alternate head, it should be fairly easy to swap out. I pulled pretty hard, don't want to break him, so... Uh, later I will swap them out and show you guys how it looks with that on there. But it's frustrating when it should be should not be that easy. I wonder how many people are going to break their figure when trying to swap it. Uh, here is a jar of slime. I absolutely love this. The Winston figure comes with a device that scoops up the slime and then we have the slime itself which is pretty cool. Um, he has two hands on him right now. I use the open fisted hands that can hold stuff. Those will be my ideal hands for him and I will throw the other ones in the fodder pile. He also came with two open hands as always. The Ghostbusters seem to always come with extra hands. I just toss them in the fodder pile. He only has four hands total which I found interesting because the Winston figure from this series had six hands. Next we've got the slime blow accessory um, coming out of here. I'm sure people can make a lot of inappropriate use out of this. Haha. Uh -huh. um, pretty cool. I do like it. It feels much more durable than the Protron streams that I've had several break. And last but not least, he does come with a piece of the diorama. I believe this to be identical to a piece that came with somebody from the last series, so they probably fit together. I can't wait to make a little bit of progress on this thing. Unfortunately, it's only going to be 60% done. Cannot wait till it's all the way done. It's going to be great in my action figure world. So, next, let's check out the size of the figure. So, this figure is really tall. It looks like he's at where, where his head is, around 7.5 inches, and where the top of his slime blower is, about 7 and 3 quarters inches. Very large scale of figures very detailed, do love the select figures. One could say maybe they're almost a little bit too big, which is pretty odd. I usually complain about figures being too small. So let's check out this guy, his articulation scheme. So first of all, his backpack, it's sort of soft goods, not removable. I'm sure if you really wanted to, you could mess around and do that. Head, of course, the usual ball joint. Uh, the slime blower pack prevents him from looking up very far. Um, and he looks down pretty nicely. He has an ab crunch sort of swivel type thing in there. He also has waist articulation. He's got shoulders that go out that far. Up, down, around, elbows, in and out. Do not believe they're double jointed. They also swivel. He's got wrists on his removable hands. They move up, down, as well as all the way around. His thighs, hip area, go out almost all the way. They go up this far, back, really not at all. Double joint knees, a lot of fun. I love double joint knees. And then he's got his feet that go up and down. They also go... Hmm, 
maybe they don't go around. They do have ankle rockers as well, though. Kind of hurry through the articulation because everybody knows it's a traditional Ghostbusters articulation theme. One complaint I have about this figure is his slime blower. Maybe I'm just stupid, but I cannot figure out how he's supposed to hold it in the movie. I don't even think that it had this part right here. I just watched it before doing this video, the part where he used it in the Statue of Liberty. And it seemed like both him and Winston held it from sort of back here somewhere. This thing was, yes, on there, sort of the other handle. My biggest problem with these figures is, sure, he can hold it when he's walking around, and it works pretty good, doesn't really fall off that much. But when trying to hold it properly, I'm going to assume this is intended for this hand, he just simply cannot get it with both hands at the same time to hold that handle. I remember the exact same problem with the Winston they released previously. Maybe I just can't figure out how you're supposed to hold that but it does not seem to work properly, as well as this accessory is attached all the way on the other side, and the hose does not really stretch quite far enough for him to hold it with this hand on that handle properly. It's all the way fully tight. Poor, 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 poor execution, if I may say so. So, two corrections to the articulation accessory section. Uh, he does also have a removable walkie-talkie. Um, I use a lot of those for police action figures. And he also had some thigh cuts that I forgot to mention. Um, pretty obvious, but just figured I'd point out that I forgot to talk about those. Uh, so here is the alternate head. I love it. It's sort of demonized, kind of freaky, ghost-looking, kind of deformed, warped. Um, kind of looks like Vigo a little bit. He's sort of possessing him, taking him over. I didn't like the fact that I felt like I had to use hot water, which I did use, and it came off no problem once I did that. Maybe you don't have to do that, but I've had too many problems with breaking action figures by not being careful, so I decided to heat up water and do that that way. I imagine it probably is able to be done, but boy, I would have been annoyed if it broke that peg. So, like I said, he's got horns up here. Kind of demonish, devilish face. I do like it. That part of the movie, I think, as a little kid, kind of scared me. Um, here he is next to Vigo, who is sort of possessing him, and I kind of like how his head looks there. One thing I would like to point out is a nice little attention to detail they made. He has long hair here, the Ray figure, and you can sort of pull the slime blower apart so that his hair does fit down in there. Very nice little, um, I don't know, feature they made so that it doesn't hinder it going in there. Here is Ray with his slime blower counterpart Winston from the movie. In the movie, only those two had slime packs, and the other two Ghostbusters had proton packs still. Um, I believe this is actually the right way to put the holster, the slime blower, onto their neck. Uh, I don't believe this is the right way they had it in the movie. Um, I kind of had him sitting like this on the shelf. I see how he was holding this side, and then his hand is really close to holding the front handle. I think it's about the best you can get these guys. It works a little better that way. Winston's pack is attached on this side, which makes it a little bit nicer. The hose is smaller, but it is a lot easier to make that work with that figure. Here they are, slime blowing at some ghosts. I do like the way that looks. It's pretty cool to actually have these. Absolutely loved Ghostbusters as a kid. Had all the, I think it was Kenner figures. Love to have a more realistic portrayal in the select 7-inch scale. Here is Ray with the previous Ray from Ghostbusters 2 in the darker suit with the proton pack, as well as on the left hand side, Ray from Ghostbusters 1 with the proton pack, classic Ray. If I were to pick one of these to own, it would be the one on the far left. If I were to pick one of these to own from Ghostbusters 2, it would be the one in the middle, as he has a different weapon. But all three of these are pretty nice. I'm going to keep all of these as they are the basic sort of version of Ray. From Ghostbusters 1, they also made a Quitten Time Ray, which you had to get to complete the diorama. I did get him, but I sold mine on eBay as I felt like I didn't need him. And they also, I believe, made a Marshmallow Ray, and he was not required to get the diorama. He must have been a Toys R Us exclusive.
This is a pretty nice figure. You have to get the select version. He's $25. I got mine through Amazon.com for $24.89, I believe. Prime came really quick as soon as it released. <clears throat> I would recommend getting him if you want him. If you want to complete the diorama, you have to get him. If you want just the figure, I don't believe there's any way to get the basic Toys R Us version now that Toys R Us is gone. Here is Ray next to the other figures from this wave. Uh, dark Suit Peter and Dark Suit Winston with their Proton Packs, as well as Slime Blower Ray. So here are all the Ghostbusters 2 Diamond Select figures that they have made, and that they're going to make, it looks like. There's a total of nine figures here, and although I wish they had made some more, Janine, the Mayor, a new Dana, the Scolari Brothers, I'm very happy for what they did make. We got all four of the regular Ghostbusters with their Proton Packs and their darker Ghostbusters 2 uniforms, We've got Louie in a Ghostbuster outfit. We've got Janos with Baby Oscar. I absolutely love those two. We've got Vigo next, and we've got the two Ray and Winston in their slime blower variation weapon outfits from number two. Uh, I will say, me personally, my absolute favorite from the Ghostbusters 2 line is Janos and Oscar. I love civilians. I bought these figures really just to enhance my Batman world with a diorama, and Janos fits in very well. Next, my favorite is probably Vigo, just because he's really big and really cool and menacing and greatly detailed. Next is probably going to be Lewis, because he's in the Ghostbusters uniform, and it's really pretty cool. I don't like the earmuffs, but that is how he was in the movie. All in all, cannot wait to get the real Ghostbusters figures and to continue the diorama. So now we get to Ray's Collect and Connect diorama piece that he comes with. There are 15 figures you have to get. Each one comes with a piece to collect the front of the Firehouse diorama. This is going to be great for my action figure collection. I bought these really just for my Batman collection to add it to my cityscape. This piece is pretty much identical to a piece that we got in the previous series. It's a mirror version of that. I'm sure they're going to end up going like this on top of the Ghostbuster doors. I've now accumulated four bags of these connector-like things, and they are going to connect onto the back of the diorama like this to support the pieces together. Check out the diorama piece. You may have noticed in the background of this video, I had the Ghostbusters Series 1 through 5 Collect and Connect rooftop diorama piece. You may think there's a mirror between, but no, there is not. I actually built two of these sets and put them back to back for this video, and they look absolutely fantastic like that. This is something I pretty much built to use in my Batman world. It's a great rooftop. I can I keep them both side by side on top of the bookshelf with a little bit of overhang at the front. Now let's check out the rooftop diorama. Around the corner here, I've got two of the recent Ghostbuster dioramas. I'm not going to be having these all together, but just put it there for scale purposes. So here are the existing pieces we had before. As you can see here, the we've already started to complete the doorway. It can't quite sit on its own, that's why I put it on the sidewalk here. It still has its own sidewalk piece that's going to be releasing in the future. These were two pieces that they contained, pieces that they already contained that were unable to be attached as of yet. And then of course we got the alternate Ghostbusters 1 and 2 diorama logo pieces that will attach the building for either one you want. Since I'm going to be using this as a regular building in my Gotham City, I probably won't attach either one of those. I've now accumulated up to four bags of these little attachment things. They go into the back of the diorama. It has some peg holes and it will allow them to remain sturdy with each other. Let me go ahead and put all of the newer pieces together, which are right here and see how it looks all at once. Where my two rooftop diorama pieces sit when they are off duty in my Batman world. You may notice that they hang over the edge a little bit, but it's pretty sturdy. Works good for my Gotham City. So here is the Ghostbuster Firehouse front diorama. 60% complete. You can see how tall it is. Yanos at the bottom there taking up maybe a fourth of it at the most, and it looks like we're still going to get another layer for the top, as well as some sidewalk for the bottom. I had to put these white piece, little peg pieces underneath to sort of keep it up. It's going to 
be a little more secure once I get the bottom put together. So I'm guessing the next wave will either get this or this, hopefully the bottom because that will allow it to stand independently and then we'll complete it and boy this thing is looking nice. There's the doors open both here as well as the sort of window area uh, as well as the entire door so it has numerous different options of how to get in and out of this. The thing looks great. Look at it next to the Ninja Turtle diorama. It's going to be almost the same height. At least the plastic part will be taller. Looking really forward to getting this done. I remember how long it seemed to take for the rooftop diorama. This one is taking equally as long and hopefully will be equally as fun when complete. Thanks a lot for watching the video. If you liked what I have presented, please press like below. If you want to see more of my videos, subscribe. If you do not like it, please put a comment as to what I can do differently in the future. Thanks for watching. Talk to you guys soon.